My name is Jeremy Walton, and this is How I Vlog. Let's go! I recently was in Yellowstone where I had to vlog, which I haven't done in a while. I was a little rusty. Most of my videos take place right here in this studio. I figure doing a video about how I vlog, some tips, what you might expect if you're trying to vlog, might be a useful video for some people. I want to keep to the basics because that'll set you up for success. Let's start with one of the most important items when vlogging and that's the camera you choose. The first thing you need to do is go out and buy a Canon R3. Don't worry, just kidding, but you can if you want to. I use this camera not because it's the best vlogging camera, it's a fantastic camera for video and photos that I also use to vlog. That makes a difference. If you wanna use your iPhone, go for it. I think most people aren't trying to decide between an R3 and an iPhone. Start with what you got. At the time I was using the GH5 and a prime lens. This is what I was using at the time for work, so it's what I was using to vlog. I made it work. Now look at these two cameras. There's a big difference and let's add the iPhone. When it comes to size, you'll roughly have these options from big to small. From my experiences, let me quickly cover some of the differences you might wanna consider. The iPhone is just simple. If you have one, you probably already know how to use it. As a filmmaker, I have other options. So this is something I use if I need an insert shot, B-roll, or use it for social media when doing Instagram stories, things like that. That leaves us with these two cameras. I'm not gonna get into specs, I wanna talk about the differences in how I held these two cameras. The Gorillapod was necessary with the small size of the GH5. For me, it's actually too small to just hold. I needed something more heavy duty to hold onto that at least gave me the feeling of being more stabilized or just having a better grip. I did this for a while and had good results, but then I upgraded to the R3 and things changed a bit. When buying a camera and traveling a lot more, there was one thing that needed to change. I hated having a bag full of gear. Sometimes it's necessary for work, but any other time I wanted to bring way less stuff. This thing had to go. It mostly took up space and it was just one more thing I had to bring along. Also having to, damn, I threw it too early, hold on. I would always be uh, adjusting and tweaking and trying to form it into the right shape. It just wasn't worth it. I'm just gonna set this down right here. Having a bigger camera allows me to just hold my camera because it's heavier and you have a good stable grip. The Gorillapod was harder on my wrist and forearm. The R3 uses more of my shoulder and I can do this a lot longer and this is one consistent distance. There was a lot more play when you're using your wrist. That could be a toss up for some people depending on your needs. Those are my experiences and differences I've noticed between these two cameras. I'd still go with the R3 though because it eliminates this. One less thing to worry about and pack. That's a plus in my book. One tip I wanna mention before I grab my coffee, my R3, which I'm shooting on right now, and my GH5 both have a flip out screen. By now that's a must and most cameras have them. What you need to remember is to look into the lens and not the flip out screen. If that's hard to do, throw on some sunglasses and you can do whatever you want. Works like a charm. Now we should cover what goes with your camera and that's your choice of lens. Depending on what camera you go with, you might have a fixed lens or choose to go with a prime or zoom lens. I used to use a 35 millimeter Voigtlander prime lens, a great fast manual lens. This is me vlogging with it. As you can see, 35 millimeter is at the max. I wouldn't want to get any closer. Most fixed lenses will probably be wider, but keep that in mind if you go with a prime or fixed lens. Now, why was I using a 35 millimeter prime? Just like my GH5, it's what I had at the time and I made it work. For the R3 or something similar, I recommend a zoom lens. Right here we have the Canon RF 15-35 and the RF 24-70. Both are great options, but I do like one over the other. Let's start with the 15-35. This lens is very popular. A lot of people like the wide angle for vlogging. I personally don't like really wide lenses. I hate when you start having that weird long arm look. I know you've seen it, so I stay around the low to mid 20s. Technically, that means I could use either one of these lenses, but the 24 to 70 gives me more range that I need. So I vlog at 24 millimeters. It's just enough to stay away from that fisheye look and wide enough to punch in if I need to crop. There's room to play. 
Only needing one lens makes things simple, especially when traveling, and I still get the reach I need. There's plenty of times I'm punching in to get a better view or while I'm driving. Whatever the case may be, but having the 15 to 35 isn't enough to get the reach, and I don't want to be switching lenses for vlogging and B-roll. Not to mention most of the videos and photos I take are in that 24 to 70 millimeter range. It's an all around versatile lens for me, so when I vlog, I have one lens, one camera, and I'm good to go. Well, except for one other important item. Let's clear all this away. The last thing you'll need to vlog so we can hear what you're saying is buying the right mic. What I use for audio is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. This thing meets a lot of my needs, one being a rechargeable battery that lasts. I plug it in the night before and don't worry about it all day because it turns on and off when the camera is turned on and off. I wouldn't use anything that you had to power on and off separately. So you plug in your mic to the hot shoe, plug in your audio, turn on your camera, and you can see the mic turns on as well. Simple, I can't say that enough. Simple, 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 simple. For how it sounds, let's take a listen when I was out in Yellowstone. Just a little tip, if you're hiking in Yellowstone, get some of this bear spray. You never know when you're gonna need it, and trust me, I've almost had to use it. It sounds good, and the one thing about vlogging, especially outdoors, is you just have to roll with what you got. You never know what sounds you'll get. All around, it's a mic I totally recommend. Let's jump back when I was using my GH5 and the Sennheiser ME64 and have a listen. All right, I wanna find some shade because this sun is killing me. And actually, I think back there looks good. Still sounds good. My point here is, no matter what mic you get, if you have the right volume, people can hear you clearly, get whatever mic you want. Mounting the mic on top of the camera is convenient and the perfect placement when you vlog, but that's not always the case. Doing the review for my camera bag, I actually had to stand pretty far back from the camera so you could see what I was doing. I had to crank up the gain, but here's what that sounds like. One thing I like is these straps got moved to the bag before they were on this back panel, so when you opened it up, they would get dirty. Not bad, it works. Maybe not the best, but you can clearly hear what I'm saying. This mic also has two channels, so you can always have the second channel at a lower volume for safety. So now we have one camera, one lens, one mic. Not a bad setup. If you want an alternative, what a lot of people use is the Rode Wireless Go 2. The positive is you can be a lot further away from the camera compared to a camera mounted mic. What I use, for example, in interview is the Sennheiser G4, which is a lot more expensive than the Go 2. Like the Go 2, you could be super far away from your camera and still get great audio. At this distance though, it wouldn't work with a mic attached to your camera. This little mic you can hide. The go-to usually clips on your shirt. I prefer not seeing the mic in frame. That's just me. Ultimately, I like having the mic on my camera and I'm good to shoot. You just have to be aware of what you can and can't do. If we're talking about vlogging, then we're going to be discussing autofocus. Autofocus, the topic of many, many YouTube videos. For me, it's been a love-hate relationship for a long time. That's because it sucked for a long time. I never trusted it. Now, it's good. The majority of the time, it works. Not always, but enough that it makes sense to use it. When I was using my GH5 in vlogging, it was all manual focus. I got really good at it and became second nature, but it's work. Autofocus just makes life easier. When I was in Yellowstone, there were shots like this that didn't work. I was out of focus for the entire clip, and in that environment, it wasn't the easiest to tell by looking at the screen. Luckily, I reviewed the clips and noticed the issue. I just had to be more aware. That was the plus of having a manual lens. Nothing changes unless you bump the lens. What you could do is set your focus, then flip the switch to manual. I do this when I know I'm going to be talking a lot. Set it and forget it. I do this as well when I'm sitting in front of the camera. That way I know I'm in focus. In Yellowstone, I did a lot of vlogging and with this setup, I had some great results. A lot of it was in the moment, which really made my time there fun while filming a backpack review. If I was taking pics and liked what I was seeing, I flipped the camera around and started to vlog. Another tip you should be aware of is your exposure. Outdoors, I'm usually at an F4, but exposed for your face, don't worry about anything else. Things might get blown out or fall into shadow. Your environment will constantly be changing, so worry about you. At this point, you're pretty set up to start vlogging, although I think there's one thing you shouldn't forget. 
If you're going to vlog, then you need to make sure to get some B-roll. Whether it's an insert shot or B-roll, it'll help you in your vlogging journey. It's helped me or even saved me in the edit when I had options. It never fails, I need something to tie different clips together or some kind of transition. Maybe you need to hide a bad take or something wasn't in focus. Then you need your B-roll. I grab shots going to coffee shops and getting a latte to opening doors, car doors, food, lots of food stuff, to any kind of establishing shots really. I usually keep everything brief, but it helps keep the story going and it's really easy to do. My 24 to 70 is already on my camera, which allows me to get a range of shots. Some clips are from weeks earlier. I just have a folder full of random clips that I can use when I need them. It's a good habit to get into. Vlogging can be a lot of work, but it's always been a good time when I get to travel and film along the way. For me, keeping it simple, streamlined, nothing over the top really made the experience even better. Instead of dreading it to some degree, my new setup is grab and go. The more you can lean into that, the more life gets a bit easier. This is how I like to do it. Find what works for you and go for it. Well, there you have it. How I vlog with the Canon R3. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button because there's definitely more on the way. Subscribe so you don't miss out. Leave a comment if you have questions. Until next time, it's a wrap.